It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 I say that almost Amen. every week, but I always mean it. And today, especially knowing that uh, I'll be gone for a few weeks. I'll be here this Wednesday, but then we're gone for a few Sunday mornings. And to uh, say what a great day to come out and worship the Lord together. And after, after a business meeting today, we are going to go back over to the Yeager Fair celebration, whatever. And so any of y'all that like to go, please let Brother Tim know so we'll know how many, uh, how much food to get. And so uh, have everybody prepared to go over there uh, this afternoon. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I certainly hope that you do. Please open up for me to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, and we'll start in verse 17 in just a few minutes. Now, this is our 35th study, and the Lord's willing, our last study in the book of Romans on this trip through. But don't think, hey, we've mastered the book of Romans. <laughs> no, this is our third time through in the last 29 years. And it's hard to believe, but in 2017 in December, about five years ago, we started our third trip through the Bible. And today we'll finish 24 books of the Bible. Wow, that's pretty fast. Of course, really, we did the Minor Prophets. All 12 of those are little small books. So that was, you know. But, it's not like climbing a mountain. Well, I know the book of Romans now. No, we'll go back to the book of Romans almost every week in some form or another. Sunday school class, Wednesday night. Because Romans is where we have all this great theology. And this morning, Paul's last warning one last warning that he talks about grace and power, peace and glory, all those big things of the Word of God. So, uh, even though we're finishing again, I, I, I do hope when I get back maybe to do one message. I, I honestly don't know. I've been praying about uh, the first Sunday that we're back what to preach. Uh, I, I don't want to start a new series because next week we start our revival services. And so, uh, so I'm I'd like to maybe just do a, a, a message like summarizing as much as possible grace and faith in, in, in the book of Romans. So that, pray for me about it. That's we go. <laughs> Last week we looked at Paul saying goodbye or hello. So look, so many people. 27 names were listed. Seven of them were women. He talked about stuff like this. Uh, Phoebe, which was with him. Now there's There'll be another eight names today, so it's 35 altogether. But uh, they have the uh, uh, the eight with them, and then, of course, Phoebe's with him, too. So he, he says about her, she's a sister, a servant, a saint, a sucker, which means a female hero, a uh, protect, female protector. And she was sent. She's going to be carrying the letter to the Romans. Carrying the letter to the Romans. What a precious thing to carry. And then Quill and Priscilla, they were... Helpers even laid down their own necks for the Apostle Paul. You think about that. So just think about all these ones. Well beloved uh, Epidetus, Mary much labored. Some of them labored, but Mary much labored in the Lord. And then uh, this one guy here at verse 10. Apelles, approved in Christ. He's the only person in the Bible that says he was approved in Christ. That's all we know about him. Paul said, Tim, if you, you study the Word of God to be approved, and Paul said in another place, I want all of you to pray for me that I'll be approved. But this man was approved in Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, so, so that list of people there, and he's ended with the churches of Christ salute you. You think the letter's over. Well, you thought it was probably over in verse 33, the last chapter. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Believe it or not, he's got three more amens. Brother Jeremy, he's a Baptist preacher. He thinks he's through, but he just ain't through. He said, Amen. Then he had this list of names that said the church salute you, so he's finished, but now he's got one more thing to say. And then he's got two more things to say. And so that's what we want to look at today. Paul's last warning in grace and power and glory and peace. These things. Let's read verse 17 through verse 20, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Our main thought is this beware of false teachers false preachers. And, two things, be established in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now they'll go together. If you're established in the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be aware of false preachers, false teachers. Listen to this. Now I beseech you, brethren, 
But see, she's only used that word three times in this entire letter. It means to beg. Literally, I'm begging you. Come beside me. Come along beside me in this effort is what it literally means. I beg you, my brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses. Now, it doesn't mean take a can of bread, spray paint, and start painting them. That's not the kind of mark that he's talking about. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, so mark them and, and avoid them. So you do two things. You mark them and you avoid them. Because for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They're not slaves of Jesus. If you have a different translation, Christ says slave there or servant of. They are not slaves of Jesus, but they're slaves of their own belly. That means they're, uh, they're appetites, they're base appetites. They're slaves of their sinful appetites. And how do they deceive people? By saying Come and join our home fellowship, 666. No, that's not what they say. They don't say, come and we'll teach you all the bad doctrine we can by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad, therefore, on your behalf. Sounds like what he said to them in chapter 1, verse 8. When he first started the whole book, chapter 1, verse 8, that your faith is spoken up throughout all the world. For your obedience has come abroad to all men, and I'm glad, I'm glad about that on your behalf. But yet, keep this in mind, this warning, I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Hear that beautiful title that he used over in verse 33, the last chapter. And the God of peace. What a title for Jesus, for God. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Now think about that. How is Satan going to be defeated? Under the feet of the church. Man, that ought to make you feel good. Satan is going to be under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Here's our second amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with a, please Lord, help me to calm down my own excitement, but excitement about this great passage of Scripture. I pray for your anointed, Lord God. Open up the ears of every seat, every pew, Lord God. Let our ears be open to receive what you have for us. And behind the pulpit, Lord God, draw us closer to you. Help us to be more like Jesus and less like ourselves. And anyone listening today that don't know Christ as Savior, Father, I pray that you burn their hearts today to be saved and wash their sins away through the propitiation, through the ransom of Jesus Christ. Father, we do love you. I pray, Lord God, that you'd help us to do your will. Bless Calvary Baptist Church, Lord God, the upcoming revival. Give us souls after souls after souls. Give us souls for the labor, not just at this church, Lord God, but spread a revival throughout Yeager, McDowell County, and southern West Virginia. Start a revival, Lord God. Send a revival. Father, I pray this very often. Either give us revival or give us rapture. This world is so evil, so wicked. We want to be with you. But to be here, Lord God, is necessary now. So according to your will, Lord God, send us a revival. Father, I pray that you would help us to do your will today. Whatever activities that we do, that be bringing honor and glory to you. We love you, Lord God. Pray for all the ones on our prayer list, especially our children, Lord God, that are sick today. Please touch their bodies. Bring them back, back very quickly to us. And Father, we thank you for what we're about to receive from your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One last warning. First he says, mark them and avoid them. Mark them and avoid them. I beseech you. He's begging them. He's warning them. The other times that he used this is just right here close by, so I'm going to read them to you. Chapter 12, verse 20 says, I beseech you, beg you. That's the first time he used it in the book. All the way to, all the way to chapter 12, he says, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Wow. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Then in chapter 15, Verse 30 says, Now I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, 
for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Well, that's pretty important, isn't it? He's not just begging them. He's begging them for Jesus' sake and for the love of the Holy Ghost that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. So he didn't say, he was, say I the, uh, the great Apostle Paul said, I need all your prayers. And that's before he started this list of names. Here he says, I'm begging you. Come along beside of me. I'm pleading. Let's do this. Watch out. Mark them which cause division and offense. Now, what's that mean? Mark them. Well, it's a good word. It's a word that you know. It's the Greek word skopio. But you use that word more often than you think. He'll really say this a lot. I'm going to go scope that out for myself. <laughs> or you use a microscope to examine stuff real small. You use a telescope to look at something way away. Skopio means examine. Like you say, I'm going to go scope that out. You're going to go examine. Look it out for yourself. So we are to examine what they stand for. Now, if you're taking notes, I'm going to, that could give you probably eight, but I only chose two because they're a couple of my favorite. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 through 23, Paul gives the Colossian church a warning. Philippians chapter 3, in fact, almost the whole chapter, uh, especially verse 2 and verse 18 and 19. Mark those that cause trouble. Beware of them. They cause divisions. That's why you need to look out for them. They're troublemakers. They cause divisions. Huh. Now, it says cause divisions contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Okay, so, it's not. Now, sometimes there'll be a need for division. You do know that, right? Sometimes there's a need for a division. 22 years ago, our church. Divided from the American Baptist Association in, in, in the covers of the entire world. We divided because they started saying they were okay with people being ordained as homosexuals. Now, I've never heard of a Baptist group this level, but I tell you, and it turned in a hurry. It's already been starting to turn for some time, but they turned so quickly. Our deacons tried. We, we, went, we went to the national meetings uh, in Syracuse and in Indianapolis. We tried. And Brother Clyde Robertson, remember Brother Clyde, the pastor here, was pastor of man at that time. He and I would go to the meetings. They say, here comes those troublemakers. They actually said that to our faces. Here comes those troublemakers. Because we were saying, look guys, we've got to follow the Bible. When the leader of the whole denomination, Dan Weiss, says the Bible contains the Word of God. If not the Word of God, but it contains the Word of God, you have no hope in your denomination. Right. You can throw him out or either get out yourself. When you say that homosexuality should be invited and welcomed into your church. I said, I'll tell you this much. They'll be welcome to Calvary Baptist. Everybody's welcome to Calvary Baptist. How is she going to come to no Christ to say? But nobody's going to be affirmed. In, if, you're, if you're a drunkard, you're not going to be affirmed in your drunkenness here. If you're homosexual, will you not be affirmed in homosexual? You'll be affirmed that we love you, that we care for you, that Christ died for you. Everyone's welcome to come to this church. If it's not, we call to close the doors. Everyone's welcome to come to this church. But we cannot affirm people in their lifestyle. We cannot affirm. And that's why we're so hard on each other. you got to live holy. you got to do this. you got to do that. You must fall. You must pray. Seek the face of God. Give your life to Him. So there's times you have to divide. But mark those, scope out those that are causing divisions that are contrary to what you've been taught. And avoid them. Don't engage with them. In another place, and I think particularly about Jehovah's Witnesses and Christian scientists, in the little letter that John's writing, John said, do not invite them into your home and do not wish them Godspeed. That's what Paul said. Avoid them. Oh, it's not saying you don't love them. And I said that you can't talk to them in private and try to share the gospel, but don't just to say, well, let's engage you in an open discussion. No, God's Word says this. What can we do to help you find that truth in your life? Because there is no other truth. You must find Jesus. So avoid them. Stay away from that. Don't engage them. Don't invite them. Don't wish them God's speed. Why? Verse 4, verse 18. Because they're not the slaves of Jesus Christ. You know, everybody's a slave of something. I know that's kind of hard for us to understand. 
But in the Roman Empire, which covered most of the Western civilization, there were way more slaves than there were citizens. And uh, so people just took for granted that slaves, people knew what that was. You, you, someone else. So Paul used that. Christ used that many times. That we are to be his slaves. We belong to him. He bought and paid for us in his own blood. Hallelujah. But mark these people and avoid them because they don't serve our Savior, Jesus Christ. They serve their own appetites. And how do they do it? Well, verse 17 says offenses. And then verse 18 explains how they do some of this. Offenses. That's another Greek word you know. Scandalos. Guess what English word we get from scandalos? Scandal. Scandal. Man, that's genius. Is here, all right? <laughs> scandal. A scandal is this. It's the part of, and You remember old-fashioned traps you would see that they would have a stick or something sticking up and, and holding it up. And then that, that's actually, in the Greek, the scandalos. It's the trap part, okay? Or nowadays, if you buy a trap, you actually... I think they still call them this on Black Barry Trap. That's the scandalous. That's what it's called, the scandalous. And that's what makes this trap shut. God's what he says, don't take their bait. Don't take the bait of these filthy men. What is their bait? Good words. They're so sweet. So kind. Fair speech. They come in saying, I want they're dividing people up. But by the way, they don't evangelize the lost. They evangelize the church. They want to come into the church and say, now I know you go down to Calvary Baptist. That's a good church. No, we won't use that church. I'll, I'll use, I know you go to, uh, to Christ Cathedral. You know, that's a good church. And people love the Lord God there. But if you come to my home fellowship on Tuesday morning, I'm going to show you the deep meanings of God. So they're so sweet. And, you, and, and we'll try to meet your needs and do this and that. And so the fair speech and and good words. But all they're doing is trying to draw the following off to themselves to divide the body of Christ. And they are not, do not forget this, they are not following the doctrine. That, you see that word doctrine, the teaching that you have learned. He says avoid them. But be obedient and be wise. For your obedience, now, oh, well, let me use the go with one word because it's going to be confusing in a minute. Their fire speech, they deceive the simple. The word there means uh, inexperienced, innocent, the naive, okay? So so that's who they try to target in church. They try to find someone that's just got saved or someone that's not attending church very often. They say, you know, we're going to show you deep things. You know, at Baptist Church is good. They'll give you the milk, but we're going to give you the deep meat of the word. Come and do this. Guys, avoid that stuff. When people are not teaching Jesus Christ and they're just trying to divide the church, avoid that. For your obedience has come abroad to all men. It's like you said in chapter 1, verse, verse 8. You, your faith is known throughout the whole world. I'm glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet, I would have you wise. It's the word expert. It's a pretty cool word. I would have you to be an expert in that which is good. That's that's. And I want you to be simple. Now it's not this, it's a completely different Greek word to simple up in verse 18, which means innocent, uh, a newbie, uh, you know, naive. This is simple, which means unmixed. I want you to be unmixed. You can be, you can be a Christian for 60 years and still be simple in this sense if you have an unmixed love for God. That's what he said. I want you to have, I want you to be an expert in what is good. And I want you to be unmixed with the things that are evil. Is that just not good advice? Mm -hmm. Just good advice. In the book of Proverbs, hopefully this Wednesday we'll get to this verse, where he says, those that are drink wine bibbers, that's an old King James word, those that are wine bibbers, those that are gluttons, avoid them. I think that's a good point. If you hang around with drunks all the time, you probably won't become one. If you're not having enough gluttons all the time, you probably won't be a glutton. So, so he's just saying, avoid this. I want you to be simple, unmixed, apart from the evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. 
That's one of the most exciting things. When I got to that part, I didn't know if I could get any further in my Bible study. That when Christ is going to, you remember way back in the book of Genesis chapter 3, that God speaking to Satan said, you will bruise his heel. Mankind, even the Savior, the Messiah in particular, but he will crush your head. <laughs> I like that. And here it says this. Satan, what a promise. What a promise. Satan will be crushed under your feet. Shall be bruised Satan under your feet shortly. Wow. Now, there's a couple of different things. So I wrote down what uh, all three different things that people say about this idea. Okay. First of all, uh, could be said, do you remember the conflict between the wicked and the strong that it took so many pages on, like eight paragraphs? Well, that conflict will be ending shortly. And then some people say, uh, that it's uh, the Roman government be ended shortly. No, I think very clearly it is. Satan will be defeated quickly. It's coming, guys. It's coming. I want to read it to you. I want to read it to you. That under the feet of the church, this is going to happen. If you want to follow along with me or at least take notes, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Revelation 19, 11. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes are as a flame of fire. His head, on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies, plural, that's not just angelic host. The church were in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in white linen, uh, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp two-edged, a sharp sword. And with that, he, Christ, shall smite the nation. And he shall rule over them with a rod of iron. He shall tread the winepress of fear and sisters the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh name written, King of Kings, come on. Lord of the Lord. Lord. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We will be with Christ. We won't do any fighting. Don't worry about it. We'll be a white with the armies and they won't be made bloody. He will make the blood of the earth. He will defeat all of Satan. Verse 19. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth, their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them. The false, remember we would read about the false teacher just a minute ago. This is the culmination of that. The, the false prophet received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. Both these were cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeds out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Church, that's happening. We are going to be a part of that. We someday will see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You say, well, right now I feel like the Satan's getting a victory. Well, he is called the Prince of the Power of this era. Right now, Satan is up. And there's cancer. There's death. There's hurricanes. You know, that man had never seen. There had never been a hurricane. But the Bible said, we read this back in the early in the book of Romans, that the earth is groaning and groaning under the pressure of sin. But someday, church, it'll all be gone. Hallelujah. God will have that for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you want to read that too. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Know ye not that the saints, that you and me, shall judge the world? What? And if the world shall be judged by ye, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things pertaining to this life. Church, did you know that? We're going to judge angels someday. We're going to judge the unjust. We'll be there for it all. Hallelujah. Satan himself will be put under our feet.
peace. So there's a warning. A warning, then that beautiful promise that in the end we have the victory. Next, he has more names. We're not going to spend much time here, maybe two minutes or so. Timothy, my fellow worker. I'm, excuse me, I always read that back. Timothy, my work fellow. It's because it's the same Greek word that's translated fellow worker every other time in this chapter. King James does stuff like that. I don't know why this one time they translated it different. Timothy, my work fellow. And we know about Timothy, though. He was half Jew and half Gentile. Paul took him on missionary journeys. He became the, the bishop, one of the first bishops uh, of Ephesus. And Paul writes to him, 2 Timothy, when he's there in Ephesus, leading the churches. God has blessed this man. Oh, I skipped a few words, didn't I? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. God's grace given to us. Hallelujah. God's grace given to you and me. Amen. Timothy, my work fellow, Lucius. Now all these men here we meet in the book of Acts. Lucius is in the book of Acts. And Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen salute you. So these other three are actually kinsmen of the Apostle Paul. My kinsmen salute you. Now here's a verse that throws a lot of people. Are you ready? I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Wait a second. Hold on just a minute. Who's this guy and what's he doing claiming to write the book of Romans? Well, we do know that Paul wrote the book of Romans, but Paul wrote almost nothing. All right. Back when I used to work for a living, and I had a secretary, when she would type letters for me, he would put my name and initials. But then it got from it, colon, now we have her initials. Because that way you know she typed the letter. That's all this is. That's what it said is. But don't you think this is cool? We'll meet this guy in heaven. By the way, his name means Trey. You've known a lot of Trey's in your life, right? I mean, Trey's grow up here in this church. I, Trey, wrote this epistle. I want to say hello to you guys to salute you in the Lord. I just think that's really great. We'll meet him in heaven someday. If he's not wearing a name tag, we might not know who he is, okay? And say, Tertius, I know you. Yeah. That's right. I was the first one to hear the book of Romans. I wrote it down word for word as God moved on the Apostle Paul. I wrote it all. Can you imagine me in the very first person to hear the theology of the greatest theology book in the Bible? Wow. I trade. Wrote this epistle. Then Gaius, also in the book of Acts, my host, this is Paul. Back to Paul again. He's, he's the host of the Apostle Paul. We met him in Corinth where he was Paul's host. That's where Paul still is. And the whole church salute you. And Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, remember he got saved in the book of Acts. Big time politician. His name is actually mentioned in regular uh, world history. Salute you and then and Cordus, a brother. That's all we know is he's a brother. He's a brother in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we have it again. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So it's the fourth time he's landed his letter. <laughs> but you know it's a whole lot easier to start a conversation than it is to end it sometimes. Isn't it? We all know when the phone rings. What do you do when the phone rings? It's easy to start. Hello. That's what you start. You know. I hope you know who it is on the other end. If somebody... Yeah, and you're right. What do you want? You know, if you just passed them or whatever. But sometimes, guys, if it's a serious conversation, it's hard to figure out how to end it. You kind of circle around the idea, you know. So, uh, anyhow, so, so he's going to have some, a little bit more to say here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen again. Okay, so that's the fourth time he's going to do the letter. But he's going to say something here. That should make a Baptist shout. <coughs> Listen to this. Now to him, if your Bible doesn't have a capital H there, you need to make one in your Bible because it's a capital H. Now to him, God, that is of a, a power, dunamis, dynamite, dynamite power. Now to him, that is a power to establish you. That means to make you unmovable. Make you strong. Wow. He's already encouraged by saying Satan's going to be trampled under your feet. Now he says, God gives you power. According to my gospel. They said, would Paul have a different gospel? No, he just said, 
It's what I preach. It's what God gave to me. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's plain. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. He said, no, we've got the power of God. The power of God. What is the power of God? It's the gospel. People spend their whole life trying to find something. The answer is Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. 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 Right. You could spend this your life searching the whole world of getting one doctor degree after another. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. See, seeking out through this and that and another. But the true power of this universe, the dynamite, it's the word dynamis, the dynamite of this universe is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. It will change eternity. When Brother Calvin's brother, Bill, brother law Bill, asked Christ to forgive him of his sins and to renew his relationship with him, let me tell you what, eternity was changed. Yeah. Not just this world. Not just a comfort to his children and grandchildren and family, all those sort of things. It changed eternity. The power of your tongue, church, listen to me. The power of God lies in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a mystery. You say a mystery? What, what do you mean a mystery? A mystery, yes. It's a mystery. That every time that you see mystery related to the church in the New Testament, it means a mystery that was hidden in the Old Testament. But let's read, let's read verse 26. He'll, he'll preach it better than I do. But now is made manifest. How? By the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations. Why? For the obedience of faith, the faith in the gospel, faith in Jesus Christ. Here's what it says in the book of Colossians. Almost the same thing, but I just love the, the beauty of how it says this. Let me find it here. Colossians, verse 26. Even the mystery, Paul writes to the church at Colossians, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, that you and me, to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Here it is. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. That's the mystery. The Old Testament would see hints of it. We can read now with Christ come. We can see Christ in Genesis 3. We see Christ in, in, in Genesis 22 up on the mountain. We see Christ as we go through the whole Bible there. Guys, we're on this side of the cross and we see the mystery that was hidden from Abraham, hidden from Isaac, hidden from Isaiah. Isaiah wrote about it, but he didn't know what it meant. Jeremiah wrote about the new covenant, didn't know what it meant. But now we know, don't we? Jesus has come, the Messiah of Israel, to save all the world. What's it say there? All uh, obedience, all nations. A double -L, all nations for the obedience of faith. It's always about faith. Faith. Alright, so. To God, only wise, be glory through Christ Jesus forever. And finally we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, fifth time he finally got it right. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a book. But don't close your Bibles yet because we still got something to talk about there. The, to God only be glory. How does God get glory? Through Jesus Christ forever. I don't think people have, to have a good understanding of this. This is one thing. You, I think it's about page 70 or so. It's somewhere along in there. We'll get into the glory of God. Do you know why God made the universe? To bring Him glory. Do you know why God sent His Son? Oh yeah, He saved us. We're glad for that, aren't we? He sent His Son to bring glory, eternal glory to Him. God's the glory of God. What deep and magnificent theology. The ultimate purpose of all things. That's why there will be a new creation. The deepest of all theology is that all things 
were done for the glory of God. To God, only wise be glory through Christ, through Jesus Christ forever. So I want to close with this reading back to the book of Revelation one more time. Next chapter over. Chapter 21. The glory of God. John said, he carried me away. I'm going to read. And he carried me away. Chapter 21, verse 10. He carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Brand new heaven and a brand new earth. He'll roll this earth up like a scroll. That's why these tree huggers are wasting their time. This world was not meant to last forever. God has an expiration date on it. It'll be rolled up like a scroll. I thought all my life, what? Even as a little kid, I was weird about it. I think, what would I like to see in the Bible most? When I was a little kid, I thought, I'd like to see David whoop that big giant cut his head off. <laughs> all boys like a lot of blood, you know. But, you know, it's, and I thought, no, I'd like to see Christ on the cross. But no, the older I get, I would, the one thing I would like to see more than anything else was the glory of God when nothing was there. He stepped out into nothing and created the heavens and the earth. But you know what? I do get to see it. I'll be standing beside him. Oh, maybe not next to him, but I'll be standing there. And he'll speak a whole new world into existence. A whole new universe. And a brand new city, Jerusalem. 1,400 miles, just one city, 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles by 1,400. And the earth that we have, it won't be like this earth. There'll be no more oceans. There'll be land for people to farm and to live on and to have. All right, so, uh, okay. Revelation chapter 21, verse 10. Having the glory of God, <coughs> verse 11, and her light was like unto a stone most precious. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a, high, uh, had a wall, great and high. It had twelve gates, the gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Which I don't want to keep going on. Chapter 22, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in the midst of it. And his servants shall serve him. And we shall see his face. And his name shall be in our foreheads. And there shall be no candle there. No, shall be no night there. They shall need no candle. Neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign. Forever. And forever. That's the glory of God. Don't you want to be a part of that today? Let's stand together. I said, Carlos, she would come back to the piano. You're here today. I said, well, listen, I'm a member of this church. Church membership ain't taking you to heaven. You have to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you don't know Christ the Savior, we invite you to come. If you know Christ the Savior, and you just say, I need to be more vocal. I need to be a better witness. Right where you are, as we're singing, confess to Him. I'm going to make a public testimony. I'm going to be more on fire for Christ. Let's bring people to Jesus Christ. What page is it? 329. Page 329.
Remember each other. God bless us to be faithful to Him. Put our hands together for prayer. Daddy. 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 I'll ask Brother Danny to take us to the Lord in prayer. Bless you. Most gracious Lord, we thank you for another day. Father, we just thank you and praise you and lift you up, Father. Father, we just ask that you'll be with us throughout each time. Father, please help us to reach out and witness to those, Father. They may see that in Christ in their lives, Lord. Father, as we see this catastrophe in Florida, Father, and up the coast, Father, we just ask, Father, to help these people, but most of all, Father, those who are lost by Jesus. Oh, God. Father, we just pray to you guys, help us to do your will. Amen. Amen. Amen.